Good evening. Good evening, Miss. Okay, welcome to another session. Uh, we are almost, almost in the last day. Uh, after this session, we are just going to have one more. The, and in this case, is the session that we are going to have tomorrow. And we are going to end this module. So we are going to begin uh, to see what, uh, what are the different topics that we have for you today. Remember that uh, we are talking about the different tenses that we have in English. And in this case, remember that I said that uh, for these two last days of the sessions, um, I'm going to talk about the uh, past tenses. And we are going to do the same thing as we did with the present tenses. In this case, we are going to divide the information into different sessions. So we are going to take two tenses in one day and the other two tenses in the other day. Um, I know that uh, you have seen the message in which uh, it says that you need to complete all the activities that you have on the platform for today. So I hope that um, some of you have already uh, finished the activities. Um, I know that there are uh, some more that uh, have finished all that information a couple of days ago. So for the ones that are not like, um, um, that didn't perform or didn't uh, solve all the activities, uh, you need to do it because you know that tomorrow is the end. So in this case, if you um, don't complete the work on the platform, you are not going to have the uh, the document that, that you need to, to continue with these uh, modules. Así que para aquellos que no han logrado terminar, eh, traten de hacerlo, ¿verdad? Ya que había fecha límite para hoy a las 5 de la tarde. Para aquellos que ya terminaron, pues felicidades, ya su trabajo está hecho. Eh, estamos aquí, como dicen, meramente por papeleo, ¿verdad? Ya solo tenemos dos sesiones más y terminamos. Y nosotros estamos completos. Ahora, para aquellos que no han logrado terminar, pues traten de hacerlo eh, entre hoy y mañana, ya que mañana es la última sesión y mañana se acaba el módulo. Y... Al hacer la revisión, si ustedes no han terminado su trabajo en la plataforma, ustedes saben que van a tener problemas para tener eh, lo que es su certificación, ¿verdad? O su certificado que acredite que ustedes estuvieron, ¿verdad? Este, este mes en, en este módulo. Así que lo mejor es que eh, tratemos de completar esas actividades que nos faltan, si es que nos falta alguna. Si no, pues omitamos la, la información, ¿verdad? No. No le prestemos tanta información, sino que es meramente eh, informativo, ¿verdad? Entonces, vamos a comenzar. We are going to start with the topics that we are going to develop today. And remember that we are going to talk about the past. Um, in the previous topic, we were like talking about that uh, when we are learning English, the simple present is one of the um, most used tense or a structure that we like to use to help our students to understand better um, how to use the language. Uh, and in this case, when we're talking about past, uh, you know that we're going to talk about the uh, simple past at, at first is the, the number one thing that we are going to, to learn. Or in this case, we are not going to learn, it's going to uh, remember, because in this case, it's like um, 
a review of the topic because it is one of the most basic topics that we need to, to learn when we are in this process. So in this case, uh, it says that the simple past is one of the most used tenses in English. Eh, se dice, ¿verdad?, que uno de los eh, tiempos más utilizados en esto del inglés es el pasado simple, ya que nosotros cuando eh, hablamos con nuestros conocidos, con nuestros amigos, eh, tendemos a contar, ¿verdad?, cosas que sucedieron en algún tiempo en el pasado. Entonces, eh, es por eso, ¿verdad?, que se toma como que el, el simple eh, past es uno de los eh, tenses que más se utilizan, ¿verdad?, a la hora de comunicarnos. And that's why it's very important that we, uh, like, um, understand what are the uh, things that we need to, to know about this tense. So I'm going to move to the document because we are going to begin with the information. In this case, we are not going to um, like stop a lot of time or we are not going to spend a lot of time talking about the simple past because you know that this one is a very basic topic. So we are going to make like a review of the information that we have. And then we are going to continue with the other uh, tenses that we have. Um, in, in in this category. So it says that it sometimes it can be difficult to talk about the past, but we are going to see the difference between the four uh, categories that we have in this tense. Um, it's very important that we know what they are. In this case, we are talking about the, the, the tenses, the four tenses that we have in, in past. And uh, we need to, to know when to use them. That is like the most important thing, I guess, um, about the tenses, because we need to know how to use them and in which moment. So when we need to use each of these categories. Um, so we're going to like read something about these ones. And also we are going to make a, a short practice about the use of these tenses. So we are going to see what are the four main tenses that we have in this case. And we are going to begin with the number one, that is the past simple. Vamos a ver cuáles son los cuatro tiempos que componen a nuestro past tenses, que son nuestros tiempos pasados. Vamos a comenzar con el uno, that is past simple. Or simple past. That is the same thing. Okay. What is the general information that we have about the past? Simple. In this case, we know that um, the use of the verbs in this case is when we learn about the, the use of the irregular and irregular verbs and the difference between them. Because we are like, learning about the, the verbs and at uh, the beginning is kind of complicated because we need to, to know uh, how to use the actions and what is uh, the uh, translation of those actions into English. And then we are like being familiar with the use of the verbs, but then you need to know what is the difference between the regular and irregular verbs. And in this case, when we are like talking about the past simple, we learn the big difference between the two types of verbs. And one is that in the regular verbs, we add ed at the end of the verb. And in the irregular uh, verbs, we know that we are going to change the, uh, the, the way we write the verbs in past. Ahora, ¿por qué es importante que al inicio, verdad, de nuestro proceso de aprendizaje del idioma inglés, utilicemos tanto el simple present como el simple past? Porque con el simple present vamos a, a empezar a conocer lo que son los verbos, pronombres, estructuras, todo eso. Pero con el pasado simple vamos a aprender también las diferencias entre los diferentes verbos que nosotros manejamos en inglés. Aquí es cuando nosotros ya empezamos a eh, ver cuál es la diferencia real, ¿verdad? Entre los verbos eh, regulares e irregulares, que es la forma de la escritura. 
ahí ya empezamos a, a entender mucho más esto de los usos específicos, ¿verdad? De los verbos. Así que, en este caso, vamos a ver las... Um, vamos a ver los cuatro ejemplos de los diferentes eh, tenses that we have in past. We are going to see one example with past simple, with past continuous, with past perfect and past perfect continuous. In this case, it's just examples to see what are the elements that we need to add to each of these tense. So, form and examples. Okay, we are going to do it like this. The first one is the past simple. And we have a statement, I play. The second one, past continuous. I, the auxiliary was the verb with ing, playing. Next one, past perfect. I, in this case, auxiliary had, had the verb in past, late. And the last one, past perfect continuous. Pronoun or subject, the auxiliary had, the uh, form of the verb, in this case, being, and ing, playing. Bien, ahí tenemos los cuatro tipos, ¿verdad? Y los elementos que se requiere para cada uno de ellos. It's the same thing as with the, eh, the simple present. Es lo mismo que estar hablando del presente simple. O sea, no lo mismo exacto, sino es las estructuras. Because, let's see, we are going to move to the other eh, things that we were seeing about the present simple. In this case, we have these examples. I play basketball. In this case, we have a complement, but it's not the important thing here. Estamos viendo que estamos utilizando la misma forma o la misma estructura en este caso. I play. Sujeto, verbo. Ahora, I play, en el caso del pasado, lo único que nosotros hicimos es cambiar un poco el verbo. I play. Ya, el verbo solo lo transformamos a pasado y ya construimos nuestra nueva oración. Ahora, lo mismo en este caso. I. Si ya sabemos que nosotros vamos a utilizar el am, en el caso del present continuous, que ya estamos utilizando el verbo to be, si yo Leo, que dice past, o sea, pasado, ¿qué voy a hacer con el verbo to be? Ah, me voy a acordar que el verbo to be se transforma, ¿verdad? Cuando lo estamos utilizando en pasado. Y ese am ya no va a ser un am, sino que se va a transformar en un was. Y tengo yo el mismo verbo, I was playing. ¿Ya? Lo único que me va a cambiar aquí es el verbo to be, porque ya no va a estar en presente, sino en pasado. Next one. Lo mismo. Subject. I. Ahora. Tengo mi auxiliar have. En este caso, como estoy en pasado, ¿y quién es el que va a cambiar? Pues el auxiliar. Eso ya lo hemos visto con eh, otros temas, ¿verdad? Donde ya hemos hablado de los auxiliares. So, in this case, I need to change just the auxiliary. Why? Because that is the thing that help me to understand what are the chances, what are the structures that I am using with this sentence. So, if I need to make my statement in past, I'm going to change the auxiliary. So, in this case, I don't need the auxiliary have. I need to write the auxiliary in past. So, I had what? En este caso, mi verbo va a seguir intacto. I had played and we had the complement. Pero solo cambiamos el auxiliar. Now, in the last one, 
I have been playing basketball. The same thing. I just need to change the auxiliary. I had been playing. Ahora, así está bastante simple. Estamos utilizando la misma estructura de, los, de las oraciones en presente, pero aquí estamos utilizando ciertos elementos que me determinan a mí que mi oración está en pasado. Now, we are going to see each of these uh, categories. So I'm going to move again to the other examples. There are these ones, where are they? Here. Okay, Richard, tell me. Eh, en, este, en este caso, en el pasado, sí entra la, la, la partícula endo, cuando se habla en pasado. Esto, estuve jugando. Sí, eso entra en el, en el past continuous. Porque básicamente uh, ese es el, el, ¿cómo se llama? Um, el suffix, el sufijo, ¿verdad? El que nos ayuda a ponerle ese significado al verbo. Entonces ahí sí entra. Estaba jugando, estaba comiendo, estuve cantando. Those kind of things uh, we can see in this tense. But we are going to see some uh, more information um, when we are talking about each of these ones. So, in this case, um, we're talking about the past simple. In this case, we are just going to make like, or write some examples about the, sim um, the regular and irregular verbs. But in this case, it's just like uh, to remember this part because we already know a, a lot of verbs in, in past, I mean, in regular and irregular verbs that are in past. And this one is just for like, um, to remember something. Okay, in the irregular verbs, we have some examples. And we have the following verbs. We have the verb play, that we write like this, play, watch, watch number three look looked like this and there uh, i mean it's not irregular there are regular and then for the irregular ones we have number one B, that in this case, we are going to use it like was and also where. Come, that we use as came. Do, as the. Have, had. And last one make may so that is the way in which we learn that they are completely different because we know that in one of these we just have to add ed in the other one we need to change and we have this kind of verbs in which uh, they are completely different to the roof part we already remember that they are irregular verbs and they are also in past. Now, what are the uses that we can give to the simple past? Okay, in the uses, okay, the main use for this one is for finished actions in the past. That is like the main thing about this uh, tense. Para este uh, tema o para este tiempo, que es el pasado simple, Obviamente, nuestro uso principal y el más grande, el más fuerte, es para hablar de acciones que ya finalizaron en donde, en el pasado. Entonces, cuando una, una acción ya se realizó, ya terminó, ya cerró, we are going to use the simple path. So, in that case, it's like the main thing about this tense.
Okay, in this case, we are going to see some examples. Okay, in the number one, I was born in San Francisco. I was born in San Francisco. Next one, I cleaned my room. And the last one, I forgot my key. So in this case, we are like uh, talking about a uh, finished actions that were performed in the past. In the case of the first one, I was born in San Francisco. We are talking about the time in which we were like babies. So in that case, um, when we translate that a uh, phrase, we said, nasi in San Francisco. That's why we're talking about a, a action at that finish in the past. Yo nací y ahí se terminó ese proceso. Porque lo que sigue luego, ¿verdad? Ya es el crecimiento, niñez, adolescencia, adultez, joven, adulto, anciano, bla, bla, bla. So in that case, the, uh, the action is born, be born. And that is a past action because that is one just uh, thing that we did once in our life. Second one, I cleaned my room. I was like, um, or I had a free time and I decided to clean my room because it was like dirty. And then I finished cleaning my room. So in that moment that I say, and I cleaned my room, I had finished all the things that I performed in that space. Limpié mi habitación, ya lo hice, ya lo terminé, entonces es una acción que ya finalizó. I forgot my key, maybe yesterday, olvidé mi llave ayer. Yo la olvidé hoy, pues me estoy acordando que la olvidé en su momento. So that's why we're talking about um, finished action. We can use it with a finished time phrase like uh, we're going to see in the, in the example. Vamos a utilizarlo también con frases del tiempo que obviamente ya están terminadas. Así que vamos a ver esos ejemplos de los eh, finish time phrase. Examples. Remember that when we're talking about time phrases, we are like specifying the time in which we perform an activity. And um, we were talking about this one a couple of weeks ago. Hablamos un poco sobre estos time phrases o um, eh, palabras específicas, ¿verdad? Para el tiempo, cuando tenemos que especificar exactamente cuándo se llevó a cabo una eh, acción. En este caso, pues vamos a utilizarlos como finish time phrase, tiempos pasados o tiempos ya finalizados. So, in this case, we have the following example. Yesterday, I went to the supermarket. And I paid all my bills. I'm going to check, change this one. I paid all my bills and both. Mm, no, we are going to do it like kind of simple because in this case, we don't need to add a lot of things. Okay. Yesterday, I went to the supermarket and I paid all my bills. Yesterday, that is the phrase that is telling me in which time. Ahí es donde me especifica a mí en qué tiempo lo hice. Ayer. Because if I, if I said, I went to the supermarket and I paid all my bills, 
no estoy diciendo en qué momento, no estoy especificando en qué momento lo hice, pero si yo quiero ser más específica y quiero que la persona eh, pues sepa, ¿verdad? Ese dato, yo agrego estas palabras que me, de, me permiten a mí decirle al, al, a la persona que escucha el momento justo en el que yo realicé una acción. Next one. Last night. Last night we watched the football. Last night. That is the um that is the phrase. That is the time phrase. Last night. Ahí estoy diciendo anoche. Estoy especificando el tiempo. Next one. The phone ran five minutes ago. The phone rang five minutes ago. El teléfono sonó hace cinco minutos o cinco minutos atrás. Ahí estamos especificando. Now, it says, Other common time expressions you can use are last month, last week, last summer, in 1997, when I was a child, a long time ago, on Monday in, in February, etc. We also use the past simple for the main action when telling a story. For example, I woke up on my wedding, my wedding day. I jumped out of the bed and immediately called my brother. He didn't pick up, so I began to worry. En este caso, cuando contamos una historia, eh, también lo vamos a hacer en pasado, en pasado simple, en este caso, para, da, eh, para que las personas entiendan mejor, ¿verdad? Lo que es eh, esta, esta historia. So, in this case, um, we're just going to see a video, but I'm not going to share the screen in this case. I'm going to send to you the video. I know that I said that I'm uh, going to send a video before, but I'm going to do it right now because um, in that moment, I didn't have the time to to share this, this kind of um materials I think let me see yes we have a video uh, on the group in this moment that is cooking a spaghetti with Mr. Bean and in this case it says that we are going to watch this video to test our knowledge of the regular and irregular birds We're going to watch the video in which Mr. Bean is making a spaghetti. Then we need to, to see what are the, the different verbs that we have. And we are going to do it in past simple. And we need to, to like complete a sequence of, uh, of uh, statements that appears at the end of the video. Así que eh, vamos a tratar de ver el video y hay una secuencia de oraciones al final que vamos a tratar de responderlas. Um, the video is, let me see how um, time. Two minutes, uh, like three minutes, son tres minutos. Así que vamos a tener cinco minutos, como normalmente lo tenemos para las actividades, para poder ver el video. Escuchemos lo que está diciendo, lo que está haciendo y vamos a ver cuáles son las oraciones que aparecen al final. O, bueno, en este caso, yo les voy a poner las oraciones en la pantalla para que ustedes puedan eh, realizar el ejercicio. So, let's watch the video and I'm going to put the, eh, the phrases on the screen and you can like. Test your knowledge about the, the verbs. So let's go. Uh, it is, let me see how time, 8.25, 8, a las 8.30, resolvemos el ejercicio.
Mr. Bean never never goes to the supermarket, definitely. Never. It has nothing <laughs> there. <laughs> that is like a very funny situation, I guess. Uh, because we can see that he's trying to have a date and everything it goes really, really bad uh, because he has a very brilliant ideas. But in this case, um, we have Mr. Bean doing a lot of things in that video. Um, we have these phrases that are the things that we need to choose solve. Uh, remember that we are using a simple past. So in this case, we have Mr. Bean brush his teeth, try to cook a spaghetti in the pot, had the spaghetti in the bath, kill the bird, and take the spaghetti out of the pot for Now, in this case, we need to change the um, the verb. The number one, brush his teeth in past. What is the past of brush? Brush with ed at the end. Okay, so in this case, we have brush. I mean, brush his teeth. Next one, try. Try it in past. If someone knows the answer, can also uh, write the answers on the chat. So don't worry. You can do it like, ah. Okay. I know some of you are like kind of shy. So I know that you prefer writing your answers. Okay. Put in past. Put. is a word. Okay, in this case, it's the same. Yeah. Put the spaghetti in the bag. Kill in past. With the, with the ED at the end. Okay, kill with ED at the end. Kill the bird. And the last one, take in past. Two. Two. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Now we have here the uh, verbs. In this case, it's just like to um to remember the information that we have about the verbs. The idea of have this kind of uh, activities in which we see something funny. I think that is the best uh, way in which we can learn uh, the different structures because you are seeing something funny and you are like paying attention to the actions and then you need to put uh, your um, knowledge into action when you are performing this kind of activities. So in this case, we have the information about the, um, the simple past. Now we're going to talk about the past continuous. So we are going to uh, go to the next uh, tense in this case. So we are going to go with the number two. Two, past continuous. In this case, the form, it says that we use, um, we form this with was and where and also with the verb and ing. The same thing as with the present. So in this case, we're just going to use the form of the verb to be in past. Okay, the same structure. Now, the uses. 
A common use of the past continuous is to show that a longer action was interrupted, usually by a, by a shorter action in the past. We often use the time expressions when. Okay, algo bastante importante aquí. Uno de los usos más comunes de el pasado continuo es para mostrar que una acción larga que llevó tiempo fue interrumpida mayormente por una acción más corta en el pasado simple. Quiere decir que aquí conectamos el, el simple past con el past continuous. Y que utilizamos la time expression o la expresión when, cuando. Now we are going to see some examples. Number one, I was swimming in the sea when I saw a shark. Estaba nadando en el mar cuando vi un tiburón. So in that case, eh, we are talking about a longer action that was like interrupted, but a shorter action or a new action that is in simple past. Ahora, mi acción más larga es esta. I was swimming, que está utilizando la estructura de lo que es el pasado continuo. Y luego agrego, después del when, un fragmento de una oración en pasado. Pero en pasado, ¿qué? Pasado simple. I was swimming in the sea when I saw a shark. Next one. Henry was sitting at home when the phone rang. And the third one, she was playing golf when it began to rain. She was playing to rain. Okay, it says that when two continuous actions are happening at the same time, we use the time expression while. En este caso, cuando tenemos dos eh, acciones en continuo, o sea, con el ING, vamos a utilizar la palabra while. So we are going to see the examples. We have example number one. 
I was talking to Sarah while she was driving. I was talking with Sarah while she was driving. Estaba hablando con Sara mientras ella estaba manejando. Next one. We were playing while dad was cooking dinner. We can also use it to show a continuous action happening at a specific time in the past. También podemos utilizarlo para mostrar que una acción en continuo está pasando en un momento específico en el pasado. We have the examples. Number one. Yesterday morning, I was practicing the piano. Yesterday morning, I was practicing the piano. Number two, at six o'clock, I was eating dinner. Number three, what were you doing at 8 p.m. last night? Ok, en este caso, como vamos a utilizarlo para mostrar que una acción continúa pasando, ¿verdad? En un tiempo específico en el pasado. Por eso es que tenemos estas especificaciones en las oraciones. Yesterday morning I was practicing the piano. Ayer por la mañana estuve practicando el piano. And we can uh, may think that uh, this action happened a lot because maybe all the mornings this person is practicing the piano. Next one, at six o'clock, I was eating dinner. Maybe this is a routine. And uh, this person eats at the same time every single day. And number three, what we, uh, what were you doing at 8 p.m. last night? ¿Qué estuviste haciendo a las ocho de la noche ayer? And it's like to talk about the action that we perform in a specific time. So. Finally, the, in this case, it's the last thing that we are going to uh, see about uh, the uh, past continuous. Finally, it can be used to add some description. To a story. Es para agregar algunas descripciones a nuestras historias. For example, it says, It was a beautiful day. The sun was shining. 
as the verse we're singing. Me, sorry. Eh, dice que la descripción de la historia. Uh -huh. es, para, eh, es para agregar más o agregar alguna descripción extra a una, eh, una historia. O sea, en este caso es cuando nosotros estamos contando algo, le agregamos partes extras, así como dice ahí, it was a beautiful day. Ahí es el inicio de lo que nosotros estamos contando. Fue un día muy bonito. Ahora, las especificaciones o las descripciones de ese día tan bonito son The sun was shining and the birds were singing. El sol estaba brillando, los pájaros estaban cantando. And in that case, we are like adding a description of the actions or a description of the things that we are uh, saying in a story. In this case, we are like adding a description of the day. This, in this case, we are describing the day. Thank you, Miss. You're welcome. We were walking around our favorite park. Okay, again, this is just like uh, something that we need to remember. In this case, we are using the uh, past continuous. And yesterday, we, uh, I mean, yesterday now, uh, on Thursday, uh, we were like talking about the things that we don't need, or I think on Monday, I don't, I don't know. But we were talking about uh, the uh, uh, present continuous in which we were saying that we are not going to use the stated verbs with this kind of structure. So in this case, remember that you are not going to use the stated verbs with all of the continuous tenses. In this case, the past tense. So that case is just like a, something that we need to remember. I'm going to show you two images right now. Uh, and you are going to Think about a, a, a phrase, but in this case, let me see. In this case, you are going to think about a phrase that explain what is happening on the image. And also, you know, to, if we are using simple, I mean, fast continuous, so you need, you need to uh, write the statement in past continuous. So let me put the images and you are going to have like a couple of minutes to see. Oh. Okay. Let me put this one. here and the other one here okay i'm going to show you the images because we have two images here let's see let's see okay we have this one that is a, a clock watch and the other one let's see is this one so in this case i'm going to show you an example i'm going to write the example here and it says at eight o'clock Last night I was and in the other one it was a Wednesday afternoon
Like in this case, you are going to tell me what is happening at that time. In the first one we have at eight o'clock, last night I was, and we are like, make a description or the things that we were doing um, at eight o'clock last night. And in the other one, it was a Wednesday afternoon and you are going to tell me something. In this case, it could be something real or something uh, like fictional but you are going to use the uh, past continuous. So in this case, we have just five minutes to complete the session. So, tenemos cinco minutos para completar la sesión. Vamos a crear esa oración, esa frase que represente uno de los dos. Puede ser el del reloj o el de las personas en el bus. Entonces, vamos a escribirlos y solo lo vamos a ir leyendo a medida lo vayamos escribiendo. ¿Podemos utilizar el inicio que aparece ahí? Por supuesto. At 8 o'clock last night I was. Y podemos aplicar, ¿verdad? Diferentes acciones. O en el caso de la otra, it was a Wednesday afternoon. Y explicamos qué pasó en la tarde del miércoles. So, we have a couple of minutes. You can write it on the chat. And we are just going to read some of the examples. So, let's go. Okay, we have the first example. And it said, at eight o'clock last night, I was working so hard with my co-workers. Okay, thank you. Okay, in this case, we're going to uh, say, at eight o'clock last night, I was sleeping because I, I was tired. We have just one minute more to end the session. So if you have your sentence, just write it because we are going to end very soon. At eight o'clock last night, I was in English classes, okay? At eight o'clock last night, I was in charge. Okay, very good. Okay, time's done. So we're going to end the session here and we are, oh, I, I guess I have one more. 
At eight o'clock last night, I was having dinner with my family. Okay, very good. Thank you for your participation. So we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow in the last session of this module. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you. Thanks, Liv. See you. See you. See you. Good night. Good night.